all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for, for instruction, instruction in righteousness, righteousness, that the man of Yah may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is Watchman of Yah. Shalom to all of Yah's children. Today I just want to briefly talk about the feast that will be happening in this seventh month. According to the Hebrew calendar, it will be called the month Tishri. If you go to the Bible in Leviticus 23, I will not be reading this here. But 23 from 1 to the end, I'll say, you know, start from verse 23 to 50, you see the three feasts that is mentioned in month Tishri. Of course, there are several feasts in Leviticus that we are all to obey and keep because they are Yah's feasts. That's just why we should do them because they are Yah's feasts. There are ways that we New Testament believers do them because Yahushua HaMashiach fulfilled these feasts. They become a very significant part of our religion, if we will call it that. We can still call it religion, but our religion is about holiness and righteousness, not just ritualistic performances. It is all the things we do to the glory of Yahushua. When we are doing this feast or celebrating this feast, we are honoring Yahushua who fulfilled them. And in this feast I'll be talking about today in Leviticus 23, 23 to 50, these three major feasts in the month of Tishri, they also honor Yahushua. I will briefly talk about them, tell you the importance of them. The first feast will be on September the 25th and that is Yom Teruah or the Feast of Trumpets. You know, in the Bible, you hear about the trumpets a lot. And usually when the trumpet is sounded, it is for reasons. And we know the most important trumpet that will be sounded will be the last trump in Matthew 24. When Yahushua will come for the catching away of his bride. Okay. And there is a trumpet that is a call for war. There are trumpets to gather, to celebrate. And there are trumpets that signifies Yah's wrath is coming or is about to come. And there is a trumpet when it's time to rejoice and praise Yah. These trumpets that we have will be celebrating the first day of the seventh month is a trumpet of rejoicing and celebration. is also a call to all of Yah's children to celebrate Yah's feast, to be separated from the world and be one in the body of Yahushua. If you have a trumpet, blow it unto Yah. It's a one-day feast. And that one day is going to be a Shabbat, you know, a Sabbath. It's going to be on the 25th of September. The second feast of Mount Tishri will be happening sometime in October the 4th to the 5th. This is Yom Kippur, okay, the Feast of Atonement. On the 10th day of Mount Tishri in Leviticus 23, verse 26, on the 10th day of this month, Yah commanded a fast. So the ninth day will be the evening of the ninth day will be October the 4th till the evening of the 10th day, October the 5th, we are to fast. Now, if you check it online, the Jewish people celebrate this very differently from how I will be talking about it today. Because the Jewish people that have not believed in Yahushua will celebrate it a different way. But Yahushua is our atonement. I know the Jewish have mourning, they mourn. Yahushua is our atonement. Yahushua is the one that died to set us free, right? His blood is the only blood that was atoned, that was shed to atone for you and me, right? So that blood that was shed on Calvary was that holy blood for our atonement. During this feast of atonement, remember to fast and worship Yahushua. Think about it. Your Savior, when he suffered for you, from the evening that he was arrested, to the time he died he didn't eat or even taste a drop of water you know he suffered for you and I he carried your sicknesses and diseases and he died and shed his blood remember what the Bible said his blood poured out for you okay all of his blood all every single drop of his blood poured out on the cross every single drop for you and I and that precious blood beloved New Testament believers is for you and I. That is why this Feast of Atonement is very important. Let's make it a sacred one, okay? Because Yahushua is the fulfillment of our atonement. So we do not mourn 
on this day although you'll be fasting and of course you'll be hungry the flesh always want to eat and drink but this time we've recommended to fast and you do it to the honor of Yahushua during this fasting what do you do it's a one day feast you're going to be thanking Yahushua for his atonement you're going to repent of your sins if there is any do communion worship Yahushua this feast is so important very important and I pray the Holy Spirit lead you on how to celebrate it because I've only told you how we celebrate it may the Holy Spirit lead you in Yeshua's name the Feast of Tabernacle will be the third and last feast of the seventh month the Feast of Tabernacle will be on the 15th day of the month Tishrei that will be October the 16th to October the 23rd is a seven days feast and this feast is also very important I told you that Yahushua is in this feast this is why we the New Testament believers have to understand the symbol of this feast as sacred something to be set apart and respected and honored commemorated the, the feast of tabernacle commemorates the time of Israel's deliverance from Egypt under Pharaoh who was a cruel king and a cruel ruler especially over the children of Israel for the children of Israel were slaves under him and he was brutal he was cruel towards them so God had to send a kind of savior in a person of Moses to rescue his children when they cried out to him although God yeah already knew when he would save them but Israel had to cry out to him when they cry out to Yahweh Shaddai he sent a kind of savior in a person of Moses to rescue them out of bondage out of slavery out of this cruel wicked world Egypt that was at that time okay now please understand the Egyptians there are many children of here and God does not hate Egypt but at this time of history Egypt was a country that was oppressing God's people and the Pharaoh was a cruel man who did not show mercy the analogy is very interesting so let's get to it the same way we who cry out to Yahweh ask for forgiveness have a savior in Yahushua why I want to tell you something you probably have not heard before this revelation was given to another a prophet and this revelation came like this Yahushua was born in this feast during the feast of tabernacle Yahushua was born do you remember Isaiah 7 14 Emmanuel and God is with us this feast was the feast where Yahushua dwelt among men the feast of tabernacle the feast of Sukkot Yahushua Almighty God dwelled with us so how do you celebrate this feast I tell you how we celebrate it God of course tells us to build a tent he wants us to build a tent now the first time we did it uh, was it his first or second time we did it outside our home we built a tent outside and a lot of people were wondering what we were doing so we had to witness to them what we were doing it for okay yeah I prefer this where you can witness the people but in our situation right now we cannot do it outside so we're gonna have to build our tent inside either you build or buy your tent it doesn't really matter your taste you know and we put plants around it as we do it as close as the scripture say we should do it as possible now we are not Old Testament believers because there's certain things have changed uh, and we can't really do everything as the Old Testament believers did it but we still respect the symbols of the Old Testament as much as we can do these things we would like putting the plants around it or flower you know just decorate your tent with plants and flower God is the creator of all these plants and flower anyway you see we are like little children we're just pleasing our God here and there is no set rules and regulation so do it as close to the scripture as possible but we usually put we usually put fruits as our decoration because those are easier to get and they are common so decorate your tent and for these seven days of this feast invite Yahushua your Savior into your tent okay let him dwell with you it's a symbol and it's a feast unto Yah it is important to recognize this feast people as children of God you are to be separated from this world and these feasts are one of the ways you show yourself one with God Almighty Yah and so you have to honor it because these are his commands they are not discarded and so invite Yahushua into your tent for these seven days celebrate him 
call it his birthday. I can't tell you what day he was born, but he was born during this feast of Sukkot, fulfilling Isaiah 7 verse 14. Yahweh also said this tent that we had to stay in for seven days to celebrate the feast of Sukkot represent you and I. Imagine how feeble and how weak these tents are. They are not strong. A wind can blow it easily away. You and I, without Yahushua in us, can we really stand in the storm of this world? You and I don't need to look too far out there to see how cruel this world is. Sin abound. Wickedness rule in this world. There is a God of this world. The Bible says it is Satan. And evil abounds in this world because the one who rules this world is evil. Wickedness will continue and increase. We are in the last days. You don't need to look far out there. Do you not see the times that we are in? How wicked things are becoming? You can't tell me that, oh, people have always been wicked. No, it is increasing. Yahushua said it will continue to increase like a birth pain. Be wise so you don't be unaware of the time and season you are in. Wickedness abound. Things that were not normal before are becoming normalized. There is a God that rules this world. And if you do not invite Yahushua into your life and be saved, you will be cut up in the storm of this world. You would be destroyed. Now, God does not destroy you. You destroy yourself because you follow in the ways of this world. And the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone loves this world, the love of the Father is not in them. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of Yahweh the Father, but of this world. And you cannot share in God's kingdom if you do the things of this world and love the things of this world and regard the things of this world in your heart. Make sure your relationship with Yahushua is sound. Make sure you are pleasing Yahweh Shaddai. And it's all about a relationship. Talk to Yah. And remember, without Yahushua in you and I, we cannot remain standing when everything that is shaking will be shaking. You will fall. I will fall. So we all need a savior. Our savior was born on Sukkot. Thank you, Abbe, for giving his son. And thank you for being born to rescue us from a kind of Egypt, this world. And a kind of Pharaoh, the evil one that rules this world. And I pray the Holy Spirit leads you in celebrating this feast. My goal here is to share with you the importance of this feast. And also let you know briefly how we celebrate it. You know, and may the Holy Spirit teach you and guide you in obeying and honoring Yah during this feast of Tishri. Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory for this message goes to the Holy Trinity, Abba Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Ruach HaKodesh, a.k.a. Shekinah Glory, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit. Remember, Remember the, Lord the Lord chastises, chastises, which is to correct those He loves. If this message is a blessing to you, like and subscribe and share with someone you love.